This is the latest overpriced MacBook Pro. I am the latest overrated productivity YouTuber and here are the first 18 things you wanna do on your new Mac for productive setup. Let's get started. Number one, doing the initial setup process, add the same fingerprint twice. This way you'll never fail to quickly unlock your Mac or confirm a change ever again. Next up, display settings. Because I want my colors on screen to be as accurate as possible, I first turn off True Tone, then under appearance, I do not allow wallpaper tinting in Windows because as you can see, there's a pretty big difference. While you're here, show scroll bars always, jump in the scroll bar to jump to the spot that's clicked. This is way more user-friendly since you can now actually see how far down the page goes. Heading back to displays, I turn off automatically adjust brightness because I'm a control freak, but even with this off, you might notice your screen dimming sometimes for no reason. If that's the case, head on over to advanced and turn off slightly dim the display on battery. Under desktop and dock, I can just click to jump down to mission control since we just updated the scroll bar settings. I toggle off automatically rearrange spaces based on most recent use because I know uh, I use desktop one for personal stuff, desktop two for work stuff, and desktop three for video editing, and I don't want Apple changing that order around. While we're here, click on the hot corners and turn them all off. Sounds unproductive, but in a few minutes, I'll show you a way to get all the benefits of hot corners without you wanting to blow your brains out because you activated an action by mistake for the 10th time that day. For our next tip, first bring up Spotlight by pressing Command Space and typing Language Region Enter. I recommend getting the habit of using the new and approved Spotlight since you get to most system settings that much faster. Back to Language and Region, let's be normal human beings and change the temperature to Celsius instead of Fahrenheit. This will update your uh, weather widget here, and for measurement system metric instead of hamburgers per square feet. I'm just kidding you as friends, not really though. And I like to have the first day of the week to be Monday instead of Sunday, and this will update your calendar app as well. Next, we bring up Spotlight again and type in lock screen, enter. And here I turn the display off uh, on both battery and power adapter at the 10 minute mark instead of the default two minutes or something. And I require a password immediately so no one can um, access my uh, homework folder um, by mistake. If you use a physical dock and an ethernet cable with your MacBook, open up Spotlight again, type in network, and select the setting instead of the app. And three dots here, click set service order. And here you can actually select and drag the ethernet port on top to prioritize that over Wi-Fi. Moving over to our lovely macOS file management app finder, go to view and toggle on both path bar and the status bar so you can quickly see where you are and how much storage you have left without having to dig around for it. While you're here, right click on the toolbar, customize toolbar, and I like to get rid of the actions I never use by just dragging it down like so. I always use airdrop, so I drag that up there, and I always use share, and I drag that up there as well. I add a literal space by dragging the space icon here. I keep the view and group functions, I add another space, and I end with the search function, and I click done to save. Pro tip, now instead of having to run the AirDrop app and then having to drag the files over like this, you can now just select one or more files, click the AirDrop icon, and transfer those files instantly. Drop a like or comment down below if you didn't know that. By the way, Apple still refuses to sponsor me because I'm apparently too sarcastic, whatever that means, but this video is supported by those of you who subscribe to my paid productivity newsletter. Link in the description to learn more. Back to Finder, under Finder Settings and under the General tab, I have new Finder windows show documents instead of recents, and I uncheck open folders and tabs because I find it much easier to navigate multiple Finder windows as opposed to tabs. I don't use any tags, so I uncheck all of this to keep my sidebar clean. And speaking of sidebar, uh, here are the sidebar selections I find to be the most convenient, so feel free to pause the video and just copy this. Under the advanced tab, I check show all file name extensions, and for the love of God, please change this to search the current folder instead of search this Mac, because let's say you know the file you're looking for is within documents and you search for it, it will quickly show you the search results from documents instead of searching the entire Mac. Pro tip, with Finder open, go to Go, hold down Option, and click Library. With Library open, uh, drag the file path here and put it under your favorites sidebar. You'll thank me in the future when you have to use this semi-hidden folder to access some random files. Speaking of random files, if you're migrating to a new MacBook, make sure to go to the library folder in your old MacBook, go to fonts folder, 
Command A to select all and airdrop all the fonts to your new MacBook so you don't have to download them again. Back to using Spotlight, type in desktop, dock, press enter. And here I minimize windows using the scale effect to speed things up, automatically hide and show the dock so I'm not wasting any space, and I disable show recent applications. Now, you might notice my dock hides and reveals itself much quicker than yours, and that's because I'm using a free tool called Tinker Tool. Um, I haven't explored it fully yet, it's apparently extremely powerful, but for now, if I uncheck these two options and I click relaunch dock, you'll see my dock is so slow. Wow, I, I, cannot, I can't get used to this anymore. And if I check these again and I click relaunch, it's basically instantaneous. I know there's a way to achieve this using terminal, but I feel like this is so much easier. If you use Tinker Tool yourself, uh, let me know what tips you have for me down in the comments. This is a great segue into all the apps I install on a new MacBook. And the first one is always gonna be Alfred. Um, Alfred used to be a complete Spotlight replacement, but since Spotlight is more powerful now, I use both. I use Alfred 80% of the time to open folders, run apps, and run shortcuts even, because it's just faster than Spotlight. Um, you can also use Alfred to perform actions Spotlight cannot do by default, like locking your MacBook or emptying the trash. I use Spotlight the remaining 20% of the time to do things Alfred cannot by default. For example, accessing a specific subsetting like language and region or desktop uh, and dock like we did earlier on in this video. Since both Alfred and Spotlight require hotkeys to use, I have Alfred set as command space and Spotlight as option space. You can change this by going to keyboard, enter, uh, keyboard settings, keyboard shortcuts, going to spotlight and changing this to option space or whatever you want. I also have an entire video on how to set up Alfred for productivity, so check that out after. The next app I always install is App Cleaner. Whenever I drag over an application I want to uninstall, App Cleaner not only uninstalls that app, but also scans for leftover files and removes those as well. Pro tip. You can simply drag the icon away to remove it from the dock. And normally when I'm not filming a video, I only keep apps I can drag stuff into within the dock. For example, images for Pixelmator Pro and apps for App Cleaner. I actually find it much faster to use Alfred to open up the app than to like scroll down, find the app you're looking for, then click on it. Next up, VLC and Ina. Between these two free media players, you can open up 99% of all media types out there, including .mkv and .avi files, which by the way, I totally, and I would never download via torrents online. The next app is paid, but it's totally worth it. CleanShot X is my go-to screenshot app. I've talked about it before. It's so user-friendly. I can add blurred backgrounds to my screenshots and quickly drag to anywhere I want. I'm actually using it to record my screen right now. That being said, a free alternative is called Shotter and it has like 70% of the features CleanShot does. Last app I install immediately is Moom, which I use to resize and organize my windows. But to be honest with you, there are better free options out there like Rectangle, but I paid for Moom years ago. I'm so used to it by now and I haven't switched. Let me know if there's something you always do on a new MacBook that I missed. Check out this video on all my favorite MacBook apps for productivity. See you on the next video. In the meantime, have a great one. <laughs>